Ladies and gentlemen, kindly accept my deepest apologies for the delay. Um, I don't want to go into the details, but um, I had to have a lengthy phone interview. And I'm having a lot of interviews that um, I had in schedule. You see, I'm not yet used to being president-elect. So kindly um, take my apologies. Our struggle... Is not yet over. It is just beginning. Fellow Ugandans here in Uganda and abroad, I bring greetings to you. First of all, let me take this opportunity to thank all Ugandans for turning up in massive numbers to vote. We saw millions of Ugandans lined up to vote in different areas across the country. It was definitely unprecedented Thank you very much for accepting our message to turn up in large numbers and vote. Thank you for taking seriously, very seriously, matters pertaining our country, Uganda. I also want to appreciate all the citizens for voting for change. I have no doubt in my mind that the vast, vast majority of you Ugandans voted for change yesterday. It was indeed a protest vote against General Museveni's murderous regime of blood and national shame. Now, General Museveni, aided by Mr. Biabakama, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, other state institutions, and shamelessly, some media houses are trying yet again to usurp the will of the people of Uganda. The people of Uganda voted massively for change of leadership from a dictatorship to a democratic government. But Mr. Museveni is deliberately trying to paint a picture that he is in the lead. What a joke. Last night, even before counting was completed in some districts, NBS television started broadcasting results showing that General Museveni was leading by 63%. Following a clear script, they hosted biased individuals and lend to lend credence to the outright broad daylight robbery of the people's victory. I want to remind all the media houses and other corporate companies and citizens that the citizens are watching and all of you who are participating in this conspiracy to defeat the will and victory of the people of Uganda will certainly face the consequences of your actions. Now, let me first of all remind all Ugandans about the illegal high-handed actions which Museveni and his regime of blood have undertaken to set stage for the worst rigging this country has ever experienced. All of you know the violence and the impunity we have had to endure, the violence and impunity that we've been subjected to on the campaign trail. About two weeks ago, the regime arrested my entire campaign team, tortured some of them, and charged many of them in a military court before remanding them to Chitalia prison. These comrades had already taken on critical roles, not only on the campaign trail, but also supervisory roles on the election day. As the election drew closer, the regime stripped itself further naked, their intentions were laid bare for everyone to see. First, they switched off social media to prevent Ugandans from communicating as well as following what was going on in the election. Many Ugandans managed to bypass this blockade and started using VPNs to access social media. Ugandans could then share videos of the incidents that were going on in the election. The regime had another problem on its hand. On the 3rd of January, we had announced the U-Vote application. This is the app 
which, have, which we had developed over time. We developed this app to enable us to receive results from across the country in record time. The app had other functionaries. Citizens would have been able to upload the videos and incidences that were going on in various parts of the country. Knowing that this would expose them to the world, the regime in an unprecedented manner moved to switch off the internet completely. And they indeed switched off the internet completely. If they had nothing to hide, why keep the citizens in the dark? Why keep the world in the dark? They denied accreditation to election observers, including the European Union and the United States. Museveni knew that he was Museveni knew what he was planning to do. He could not stand an election being observed by independent poll observers. Local media houses were ordered not to report incidences of vote rigging and violence by the military against the citizens. Yesterday on election day, as the nation went to the polls and the regime engaged in incredible acts of violence and rigging, without Credible election observers, coupled with intimidation or compromised local media, as well as the internet switched off, Museveni had a field day. As we have been saying, a week to the election, the military and the police conducted operations in different districts of the country where our sub-region and district leaders were arrested and kept in prison without charge. Many of them in the districts of Lira, Moroto, Bunyangabo, Bundibujo, and very many others were arrested only to be released yesterday evening after the ele after election without any charge. Yesterday in western Uganda and northern Uganda, many of our polling agents were arrested and many chased away from polling stations. This happened in various counties and sub-counties of all districts in western Uganda, as well as areas of northern Uganda. In Kamwenje, Minister Frank Tumwebaze ordered the arrest, ordered for the arrest of all our polling agents within the district. In Butaleja, the eastern in Butaleja, in the eastern region, Minister Irene Moloni ordered the guards to beat up all our polling agents and detain them. Let me make this unequivocally clear. Almost in the entire region of Western Uganda and Northern Uganda, there was actually no voting. We received thousands of calls and messages telling us how the election was a complete sham in those areas. In Bunyangabo, in Chitagwenda, in Kabale, in Rubanda, in Barara, in Chiruhura, in Kazo, and Isinjiro, and many other districts. There was no secret ballot in most polling stations. The military gave people pre-ticked ballots. They gave them pre-ticked ballot papers. In other cases, some people were ordered to vote from the desk in the presence of everyone. In Kwania, in Bulambuli, in Karenga and many other places, some ballot boxes were open and ballot papers were put in there. In several areas of Isinjiro, Kabale, Mbarara, and the districts of Karamoja, people were told that ballot papers for the president had, had already been ticked. They had on, all they had to do was to vote for their members of parliament only. Good enough, some of these irregularities were recorded on video, although in some areas the military confiscated or destroyed the phones and cameras that were being used to record these grave irregularities, we have so much footage to share with the world. We know that the media was ordered not to cover such incidences, particularly the local media. And indeed, in many cases, media practitioners gave us information and evidence because they knew and they also still know that such information would not be allowed on radios and TV stations. We are aware that even as we speak now, Soldiers and other operatives are currently deployed in several media houses to ensure that Mr. Museveni's will is 
effect is affected precisely. And the Nashabi Abakama is not really in charge. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission is not in charge at all. Several operatives have been deployed there for several days. The Abakama is only there to come and announce what has been given to him by these operatives. No wonder out of the results that have been announced so far, they are concentrating on areas where it was very easy for Museveni to rig. If you check the data, most districts of Uganda and eastern Uganda where General Museveni was defeated decisively despite the rigging, they are not being announced. Mr. Musinguzi, the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority, has been stationed at the National Tally Center. And we are being told that he is directly in charge of the operations to defeat the will of the people of Uganda through manipulating the results. If not for these evil intentions, what role would the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority be playing in an election? Our people have been asking Mr. Biabakama to tell them where he is getting the results he's announcing from. However, Mr. Biabakama and his team do not know. They don't seem to know where those results are coming from because they are not in charge. All this is intended to dampen the mood of the citizens of Uganda and to create an impression that their effort was in vain. Now, fellow Ugandans, even with all these election irregularities, which we shall share with the world in the coming days when the internet is restored, we secured a comfortable lead against General Museveni. In eastern and central regions, Museveni won very, very few polling stations, even after massive irregularities. In northern Uganda, we won many areas despite the rigging. In western Uganda, like I've already indicated, there was literally no voting, especially in Bunyoro, in Utoro, in Ankore, in Chigezi, and in Renzori. Countrymen and women, I am very confident that we defeated the dictator by far. I call upon all Ugandans to reject the blackmail. We have certainly won this election and we've won it by far. General Museveni and his small clique of oppressors are trying yet again to impose themselves on the people of Uganda. The people of Uganda will and must reject the blunt and usurpation of their will and their voice. I want to ask all Ugandans to remain firm and confident that through this election we have spoken and we have spoken clearly. The dictatorship is failing. Right now the RDCs, the DSOs and all other operatives are hunting down our agents and coordinators trying to take away the declaration forms from them. Several of, several of our phone numbers including mine and my wife have been switched off. They've been disconnected illegally. The military is deployed everywhere. The dictatorship is in panic. In the coming hours I will once again address the nation and hopefully speak about the way forward for our people. But ultimately, we are removing a dictator. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for God and my country. Now, I'm in touch with my team, and we are going to meet and discuss and forge a way forward, which, like I said, I will be in the coming hours communicating to the people of Uganda and the citizens of the world. Right from the beginning, we have stood by the law. We are law-abiding citizens. We are non-violent. We are not criminals. We do everything we do within the law, and we shall do everything we will do within the law. According to the laws of Uganda, it is legal to protest for a right. Therefore, every legal option is on the table for us.
the U.S. is actually the most suspicious or rare food families of the Mecca food in Uganda in relation to our Western food? Well, it is not... Um, I'm not in the position to determine whether the U.S. is acting hypocritical or not. It is on how they act that they will be determined. But they continue to feed Uganda to the poor. Well, the many uh, moves that we intend to do is to call upon the development partners not to continue acting in a way that makes them appear like their partners in crime with General Museveni. We hope to call upon them not to continue supporting criminality. We share common values of respect for democratic principles, and it is our hope and prayer that the United States and all other development partners will stick by those values, the values that bring us together. As you are all aware, the internet has been completely shut down. However, we have been and continue to communicate with our uh, teams, those that have phone numbers that have not been illegally uh, disconnected. And in the coming hours, we should be able to give a comprehensive report and update on the same. For starters, we mentioned about the irregularities and the illegalities that have been ongoing. But one of the most grave illegalities and irregularities is for the chairperson of the Electoral Commission to seemingly not be in charge, to be announcing results that he cannot show the world where they're coming from. So among many irregularities that we are combating, that is included.